And it says, um, she brought them much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us the way of salvation. Now, let me tell you, there is nothing I can <laughs> decipher out of this statement that said that what the girl was telling a lie. Hello? I, would thought, I thought if she had a spirit of divination, she would come in and say, Rawr. Huh? You know what I mean? But may I encourage you that Satan himself is transformed an angel of light. I want to tell you to keep your eyes open even in church. I don't know how much you studied in use, but there's so many atrocities taking place in the church. From the pulpit to the pews. Abuses and atrocities. Mashing up people, children. I wonder where is our discernment today? Are we looking through natural eyes? And to be truthful, some people come to church and do this. I'm in church. I can relax and put down my armor because I'm in church. It's right in the house of God. We need to turn our discernment up. Because Satan not going to look for you, hopefully, down the bruises. Because he's not going to find you out there, hopefully. And lions. So if you want the people of God, he's going to come where the people of God are. I want to beg you tonight, say, God, touch my eyes, open my understanding to discern what's taking place around me. We need, in 2022, we have to go deeper. We can't just be led by our eyes, nose, ears, eyes, nose, and mouth, our natural senses. You have to begin to cry out to God and say, God, let me see the spirit that's moving in people. I was reading in my devotion this week about the book of Ezra. As the men, as God moved upon um, Cyrus and called him to rebuild the walls. The first tactic the enemy came against, they came to the builders and said, let us build with you. Yes. Yes. The enemy's tactics is to come in and to fight from the inside. Yes. Church is quiet tonight. Yeah, it's okay. Because I want us to understand, to put our defenses up, to understand that this is not just a nice broad hat, a nice long sleeve dress, and ooh, I like your bag. <laughs> that when you come in here, your discernment has to be up. Because the devil has sent people. The most precious thing that we have is our soul. The most valuable thing on this planet is your soul. Pastor, why, why you say that? Diamonds and gold and yeah. I see some nice vehicles out there in the parking lot and can you imagine if I said, may I, may I trade you see some BMs out there coming out. May I trade you your BMW Jeep for this precious napkin? <laughs> I witness not careful, right? He said, boy nice, you're crazy. Past the knocky head tonight, he gone off. Who in their right mind would trade this value? This is one, one pack of napkin, probably $3. This is about three of them. So this is about maybe five cents value, three cents value. Anybody can trade three cents for a hundred thousand dollar vehicle, right? He says crazy. He says he comes from Paul <laughs> at the shadow. Healed. Okay, good question, good question. But the average person will say, My brother, you're crazy, you knock your head. And if somebody were to do that, you say, Boy, you're stupid, you're fooly. He what the Bible says. What does it profit a man to gain this whole world and lose his own soul? Let me bring that in perspective. This whole world 
He's just worthless, you use napkin. All the money, the Jew. And God looked down from heaven and said, how can you give up your precious soul, eternity, for this? Yet people do that every single day. Sell their soul for pleasure, sell their soul for wealth and prominence, sell their soul for something that will rust and fleet. And you can't even take it with you when you go. 